when you're ready, we'll close your eyes and we'll have a period of cosmic attunement with the celestial sanctum. For that, just make sure you're quite comfortable in your chair. Have your spine upright, palms down in your laps, legs at right angle, the knees, feet flat on the floor, about eight inches apart. However, if you wish to assume another position for meditation that's more conducive to you, feel free to do that. And you're, wished, you're free, of course, to meditate as you wish, but you may wish to follow us in this celestial sanctum exercise. Take a few deep breaths, not holding the inhalation or exhalation, but obviously crucial to hold. Neutral breathing. Now, for others and stores and participants, we're going to rise up into the cosmic. And the Rosicrucians use the term cosmic as both a noun and an adjective to mean the harmonious system of all natural and spiritual laws behind all reality, all phenomena. The universe is a harmonious whole, and that universal intelligence imbued in and back of all things in this cosmos. So let's begin to rise up in the, in the cosmic. You may wish to picture yourself rising up above the room that you're in, whatever space you are in now. Rise up in your mind. Focalize your concentration above you, rising out of the building or the immediate area. Keep rising, be up above the city or the geographic area where you are, if it's a place of nature, and start to see a more vaster, extensive view. Keep going faster and faster. Use a lot of inward force here. Later we'll be passive when we reach the heights of the celestial sanctum. We use a lot of inner spiritual force to rise. We're transcending space and time now. We can go far faster than the speed of light. And rise up over the province where you are, the state and the country, rise up beyond it, up beyond the hemisphere where you are, and see the beautiful blue jewel of the earth. And also see the great fiery ball of the sun which the planets are revolving about. Take time to notice the beautiful Venus planet and Mars and its reddish form. And let's go on beyond the solar system. Keep rising up. Sense the great motion of the Milky Way galaxy, the spiraling galaxy, which is our home. And let's exit from the Milky Way galaxy, the great spiraling arm near our home. Take in other galaxies, some spiraling and spiraling in other forms. See clusters of galaxies, nebulae, myriad stars, and all the wonderful elements of creation. The supernova, the pulsars, the binary stars, the black holes. Pass beyond them at tremendous speed. Use inward force to rise up in your consciousness at the same time. As you move higher and higher, take in the great suspendous order of the cosmos, which has the cosmic back of it guiding it. Be in awe of the tremendous system and order. Keep rising higher and higher, faster and faster. So we'll come to what we'll call the center of the universe. And some posit as in ancient times, there's a great rotating axis, a great cosmic axis. And we'll come to the very middle of that cosmic axis of which the entire cosmos revolves. Sense the stupendous motion but at center, there's a great stillness, just like in the great stillness that's within the God within us. And when you reach that center, visualize your personal celestial sanctum. It may be an inspiring place in nature, or it may be a temple, or some other place that's particularly sacred to you. But fill in the sights and the sounds. There may be particular symbols, stained glass windows, there may be incense burning. There may be a service or a ritual going on there. Take your seat there with others of like mind and other Rosicrucians and other seekers such as yourself. Take some time there to just dwell 
what Rosicrucians call peace profound, which is the deepest, most profound sense of peace that we can have as a beautiful experience to help guide us and lead us in our lives. Take some time now to dwell there, profound peace, before we undertake certain other spiritual operations associated with the Rosicrucian Order I'm on. If you find your mind wandering, just lovingly return back to your focus on the celestial sanctum. You dwell there in profound peace. You may experience a wonderful tingling in your body. That's the cosmic essence of the vital life force. It's imbued in our body. It's throughout the cosmos. Let go of the cares of the day. This is a period to be recharged, rejuvenated. All the more ready to face the challenges of mastership of life after our presentation today. And while we're at the heights of the celestial sanctum, let us become one with the cosmic, one with the cosmic, as I described earlier. Become it. Take on, assume cosmic mind. You may find this is aided by sensing that your entire being is expanding throughout the entire cosmos. One with the cosmos and the cosmic mind. Further allow us to enter into the state of cosmic consciousness, or the consciousness of the cosmos and the cosmic. Do so now, brothers and sorrows, participants. Well, in the state, you may feel a great exhilaration, most wondrous joy, a sense of knowing all things. He experiences to have a deep sense of well-being in our life. Be able to share that with others. Serve. Now, while we're in this state of identification or oneness with the cosmic mind, let us radiate love and well-being 
to all those who petition for metaphysical aid in the Rosicrucian Order Amok and all those in need at this time. Council of Solace's list associated with the Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Order, the three bodies where you may be affiliated with your metaphysical aid list, all those that you know that are in need of aid, all the frontline workers, and all life forms and sentient beings throughout the cosmos that are needed this time. Radiate love and well-being to them. Allow your wholeness deep within you to assist them to be whole. Radiate now. As you radiate this love and well-being, I think you'll have a certain point where without having to be conscious of radiating, the flow continues. Let it unfold. I think too you'll experience a tonic effect for yourselves. For as you've given, so you'll receive. Now, everyone, thank you for this act of service and the work of the Silent Council in conjunction with the Council of Souls of the Rosicrucian Order Amok. Soon we'll begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. We wish to express some gratitude to those who have helped lead you and guide you in your life, the officers of our order, for the opportunity to be with other seekers, fighters and sword, be learning together, building our mission in life. You'll find as we apply the law of gratitude, express gratitude, that helps with our attunement with the cosmic consciousness as well. Now feeling rejuvenated, reinvigorated, and purified. Let us begin our descent now from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Let us descend back past myriad stars and celestial phenomena, the super clusters of galaxies and galaxies, back finally to the great spiraling galaxy where this is our home, the Milky Way galaxy. Go back in the great spiraling arm where our home is come to the beautiful system and order of the solar system and see again the beautiful fiery ball of the sun, the beautiful blue jewel of our earth, the home that is our home. Come back, hemisphere away to your left, country, and then to the state or province, back to the city or Pacific geographic area, and then into the building or site where you are, in the room or the place you are, we can say together, may the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self, the celestial sanctum. And we'll say as Rosicrucians do, we use the term, so mode it be to refer to, to be in truth. So we'll say together, so mode it be. And when you're ready, open your eyes and return to a balanced state of consciousness a deep sense of well-being and ready for our work and worship and discussion of the day. Great, thank you everyone. 
Now on our topic of cosmic consciousness, and this is a central one to mysticism. And when we use the term mysticism, we're referring to the art and science of love, the direct experience of reality, the union with all it is, the full maturation or evolvement of the human being. You know, at this time, uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere, for example, we've passed by the great uh, renewal and rejuvenation of nature in spring, but it continues on and intensifies in summer. And these seasons are very suggestive of the onset of cosmic consciousness, and they even assist in its expression coming forth within us. Sometimes the term cosmic sense is used uh, to describe the experience and application of cosmic consciousness. This is a central purpose of our AMARC studies. A central practice to assist us in experience con consciousness is the meditation like we just did. But also there's many other exercises that we learned through the Rosicrucian order, such as extending metaphysical aid that we did in terms of radiating love and well-being and myriad other exercises. Today we'll experience but a small part of the thousandfold um, teachings of the Rosicrucian Order and Mark. You know, a brief interlude in cosmic consciousness is a life-changing event. It's something that's a touchstone experience for the rest of our life. Even to enter that experience deeply for a few seconds transforms us and transfigures us. Now to think about a definition of cosmic consciousness, if, if you're a student of the Rosicrucian Order, I think you'll have seen the uh, Rosicrucian schematic diagram of mental processes. If you haven't, I'll, I'll describe it now if you can think in your mind's eye. Um, but we can think of the human being and our connection with all that is uh, like, like layers, almost like an onion. And on the, out, the outside, you can think of our objective consciousness, our capacity, our thought, for example, it's only referred to as the five senses. For example, the, the sense of uh, sight and hearing, for example, that you're uh, using now in part to be in contact with me. And those are referred to as the objective mind and also associated with the objective consciousness there. But there's also the subjective mind, uh, which deals with uh, reasoning and short-term short -term memory, for example, and, many, and certain other features. And below that, um, or beyond that sub subjective consciousness, uh, there is the subconscious, or some are referred to as the unconscious, the subcon subconscious mind. And it's where our dreaming arises from, or our long-term memory, or habits that we have that are laws in our subconscious that we learn how to change in our life. But beyond that unconscious is the cosmic consciousness which is imbued in all these states of consciousness, from the objective, the subjective, the subconscious, the cosmic state encompasses all these things. You know, we learn in the order about our outer self or the outer mind, it can handle just one thing at a time. You know, maybe listening to me and you suddenly may get distracted and you get say, okay, get back or what was you saying there? Um, one of the beautiful and wonderful things about cosmic consciousness is that it can handle more one thing at a time. In fact, it can handle everything at a, at a time. And it does that with ease. You know, even when we're trying to concentrate on one thing, sometimes that's challenging. Well, in the cosmic state, and when we enter into it, we're handling everything at once, and it's doing it with ease. Another thing that's very striking about uh, the cosmic conscious state is that there's a tremendous sense of love when we enter into it. You know, if you can think of, say, a person that you love very deeply or love very deeply, imagine uh, loving them 10 times stronger than that. And then imagine loving everyone that way, again, with ease. That gives us sort of a sense of the uh, cosmic conscious state. I'm giving some sort of some description there. I know it's often mentioned with mystical experiences that they're hard to describe, but to some extent we can convey them. You know, uh, later on uh, when we have our discussion, uh, Sora Karen is gonna kindly post up some Amorc web resources for you. that will tie in with some of the things I'm talking about if you wish to pursue this further in addition to your uh, Rosicrucian studies where cosmic consciousness is a central topic. But you know, this mystical consciousness or this cosmic consciousness 
Um, you know, in some ways it can sound rather theoretical, uh, but once we've experienced it, it's, uh, it's, it's a lived experience. It's a very powerful one. And I know sometimes people will say, well, I don't think I've ever experienced that, but often uh, in discussion, it comes out that they have. There's different degrees of entry into it. Whenever we've had a very exhilarating or tremendous sense of joy, then we've started to enter into that cosmic consciousness state. And one thing about this as well is that it isn't a matter of which we, we choose to uh, uh, enter into the state or not. It's our destiny. Uh, we can hasten it by being a seeker and uh, doing studies that are highly systematic and integrated like the um, Rosicrucian studies that will hasten it. And you know, often mysticism is described as a climb up a mountain. In our life, depending on how um, brave and courageous and how greatly we want to be of service, we can take a steeper slope up. And it's often said that as we move towards God, God moves towards us. You know, as we have remember these states that we've had in meditation and we do it daily, do them daily, we're given strength that the outer self we've been overwhelmed in, that the inner self can face and rise into. You know, states are, or characteristics of the mystical consciousness or cosmic conscious state are often described as fourfold. One is the ineffability. That is, it seems beyond description. Though things that I've mentioned so far, I think may have assisted in that. Also, you know, for example, poetry, uh, great works of art, inspiring works in science also give a conveyance to that tremendous system and order that's in the, in the cosmos and through the cosmic. Another second quality is that of being noetic. And by noetic, you know and you know that you know and you're sure of it. It's a complete experience with a full explanation. Um, one of the resources I've suggested to you is Ralph M. Lewis, who's a past imperator, the chief executive officer of our order. Um, the book, A Sanctuary Self, it's a mystical masterpiece. He wrote that as a young man in his, incarn in his incarnation, which shows how highly developed he was. But um, it talks about some of these characteristics and differences between psychic experiences and mystical experiences, if you're inclined, um, and go into more detail on that. But the uh, noetic quality gives a sense of something that's tremendously real. To the outer self, it can seem like, wow, these sort of experiences, I don't think I've really had anything like that. But once one's got a taste of the cosmic consciousness, Yes, it's astonishing. There's a tremendous sense of ecstasy and rapture. You know, we have a beautiful term in the Rosh order called harmonium. And there's harmony that's on all levels of our being, the, in our physical nature, all that system and order, in our, our microcosm, our body that mirrors the macrocosm, the cosmos that we attune with in our celestial sanctum. But also there's a sense of that harmony um, in our relationships with other people, in our kinship with them just like we're experiencing now with each other, that deep sense of harmony. Also, the um, uh, harmony with our environment. But beyond that, there's a sense of a harmony uh, with the co cosmic, which brings about a state of ecstasy. And that's the cosmic consciousness state. state. Now, there's also another characteristic of the cosmic consciousness experience is that of transiency in terms of this lifetime, is that we need to return back, but we but think we've been permanently transformed, transfigured by it. People will notice a difference in various ways that I'll, I'll, I'll outline in a little while. But even a few seconds or even a half hour is a life-changing experience that we can keep coming back to again and again when we're in difficult or challenging experience, remember it, because it gives us that vast viewpoint, that bigger perspective, we can see more things from there and more truthfully. Another force characteristic of the mystical consciousness or the cosmic conscious state is passivity. You remember when I said we rise up into the cosmic together, uh, that you use great inner force to do that? But when we, re when we arrive there, remember how they, we were then passive to allow the peace profound to enter into us. There's a degree, there has to be a degree of surrendering. Now surrendering is a little bit challenging for the outer self. The outer self needs to work as a partner with the cosmic. If the outer self will be pa passive at these times, it will find that it is enriched and it's ennobled and it's far stronger. You know, often sometimes we'll feel like, oh, I'm too busy to meditate now. But I think in general, if you can have those regular periods of meditation daily, that your day will go much more efficiently. So any challenging experiences come up, you'll see them in a much deeper, mature way 
and also you'll have more able to turn inward and see them from a more truthful and correct perspective. Because when we enter into the cosmic consciousness state, uh, we see things in a much more truthful fashion or much more mature. I think you'll find throughout your life, you found people who have been well-developed in mystical state or very mature people in other words, that talking to them is very much like talking to another person who's very mature. Because in a way, um, the, as the, the mis mystic master and traditional Rosicrucian really called the same intent, said to the effect, the mystics uh, come from one country and speak but one language. It's that one deep source that's within us through the shines through no matter what culture we have. You know, speaking of culture as well, no matter where that we've come from, the Caribbean or Australia or the, the British Isles, Canada, such as myself, the United States, you know, our past comparator, uh, Christian Bernard, said to us to assist us in the experience of cosmic consciousness, understand the history of our country and its culture, because deep within that will be the clues about cosmic consciousness. The culture at its best has various clues about the purpose and meaning of life and how to attune with the cosmic. Sometimes it takes years because some cultures are more upfront about their deep mystical teaching, but they're there and we'll draw them out more. In two weeks when I talk about temples, we'll draw this point out, this point out further. One of the other astonishing th things is when we can go deeper into the cosmic conscious state is that certain surprising things happen to us without us expecting it. For example, in the Rosicrucian tradition, uh, we talk about when a person passes away, or some in the world talk about dying, we use the term transition, or even more profoundly, as the great initiation. Um, the fear of, of so-called death is gone, period. That in itself is a tremendous benefit. Another thing that we experience is that any sort of many latent talents we have, they come out to the fore. Uh, many of them may be from previous incarnations. If you're inclined towards the doctrine of reincarnation, your uh, gives us certain ideas about that. It's something to experience that we think that uh, makes sense to us. Often when a person experiences cosmic consciousness, if it's very early on in their incarnation particularly, often that means where they left off in their past incarnation. One of the very beautiful things about these spiritual experiences, they're a little bit like seeing a, a, a motion picture show from earlier days, but the technology is somewhat similar today too, is those, those profound experiences we have, there may be a, uh, a day, a month or a year between them, but they'll, they'll, they'll fit together just like one continuous movie. It's a, it's, a very, uh, it's a very systematic, beautiful order to all these experiences. One of the other things that is in the cosmic conscious state, and I alluded to it earlier, is that, you know, it's often thought, well, well, I'll never know that, or that's just, that's always a mystery. In the cosmic consciousness state, all things are known. And when we come back more into the outer self, some of that knowledge goes with us. And as we keep entering that state, uh, we, keep, we keep expanding, we keep expanding our knowledge. And many things are known uh, beyond book learning. In fact, I, I can tell you from my own experience that, you know, from years of academic study, uh, even often a few seconds in cosmic conscious state, you'll learn far more. But it's important to do the book study as well for the outer self. Uh, uh, it'll be assisted both by its outer forms of learning and this inner form of learning, and they work together. You know, the illusions of time and space drop away as well. They're important for the outer nature. Um, uh, they're necessary for it, for us to be learning. And part of this experience of having the cosmic consciousness experience isn't to have this grand vision. So it's certainly that, and that's part of the value, but it's also so that we can be stronger. We're more capable to purge ourselves and cleanse ourselves and be more service to others. Traditionally in mysticism, this is sometimes described as the five traditional phases. The first is the awakening. That's where we awaken to the cosmic conscious state, but it can happen in other ways, awaken to a new talent. 
Now these are ones that can concur over incarnations or a lifetime, but they happen in a smaller way or subsite in a smaller way over a course of the day. That awakening, there's a new uh, idealism that's gr growing up inside us. And that's often a time where one gets a strong taste of the cosmic sense. After that, there's the period of purgation, the second period. So it can also be described as self-discipline. And that's a period where that idealism of the awakening now has to be put into practice. That is then followed by illumination when one is ready. And it can have an even stronger entry into the cosmic consciousness state. There's, and it parallels the awakening state. You see, we're following cycles here. Everything is cyclical in its nature even our spiritual development. The illumination allows us to have more sense of our abilities and latent faculties that will come out. There also much more, can be a much more inspiring figure to others. We're much more capable of service and whatever career or we've taken on, we can, it can be spiritualized and we can be a, more of a leader in that and help inspire and make it more integrated, just like we're do, doing with the Rose Quad Journal. Now the illumination is fo followed by a period, the fourth period, sometimes referred to as the obscure night, more poetically as the dark night of the soul. One thing that's very important in understanding the dark night of the soul, the obscure night, is that often it's, people are concerned about how intense it can be. But keep in mind, it's, an intensity is, lar is in large part due, it's in contrast to that tremendous uplift of the illumination. But part of the reason we had that illumination was to give us the strength to go through the obscure night. And that's where we need to be cleansed ourselves. You remember earlier I mentioned about the, so the subconscious that we have habits that are like laws. Often those have to be um, changed or replaced in our teachings. Uh, it, it's very important not to think that, wow, I'm going to have these amazing up, or have this amazing up looming, looming experience. And that burns out all the personal issues I got. Far from it. It's somewhat like uh, having been lived uh, in a bedroom where the lights were very dim. And suddenly with the awakening and illumination, the room is much brighter. And now you see, ah, that's why I've been stumbling on my face sometimes when I walk around in this room, because I've been trying to do things that are not harmonious. And that can give a sense that, okay, this room needs to be uh, tidied up, rearranged as an analogy with our own personal psychological makeup. Um, I can see him in the dark night of the soul that one feels at a loss. You don't feel as strongly that cosmic uh, attunement. But if we keep remembering back as, those, as that deep foundation that the cosmic consciousness experience gives to us, and when we experience it, we realize that it's been with us all along. It's intensely familiar, more familiar than anything else in our existence, in our way of life at all. That'll help guide us through the dark night of the soul, which brings us to the fifth traditional phase, the final phase, that of union or the mystical union. There, there's then a, a constant, continual rapport of the cosmic. One can turn in at any time and immediately have that deep cosmic sense. This is a great progression that humanity goes through. You'll find it in all the sacred texts, they'll describe it. I'm sure you'll find it in, uh, in your own life in a variety of ways. I'm gonna mention a few more things and then we're gonna open things up uh, for discussion. You know, I mentioned that the Rosicrucian teachings have many exercises of a psychic and mystical nature. We did some with the Council of Solace, reading, reading metaphysical aid, meditation, the central practice. Uh, there's also visualization. All these things help develop self-mastery, not only the mastery of a particular art and science, but mastery of life itself. Cosmic consciousness is part and parcel of that self-mastery. Now, you know, in, in daily life, and this is one person who was a Rose Christian mentor mentioned, she said, you know, when you're rising up uh, in a uh, elevator, going to a high place, or if you've got a chance to look out over a lake, you'll find that you have an expansive view. That helps us suggest to the outer mind, the cosmic consciousness state, and any experience we've had of cosmic consciousness state, we can think of and remember, and you'll have this as a daily live reality guiding us. Now, the part two, I know someone asked about part two. I'll just go over those steps. There's the, the, those five phases associated with the, the cosmic consciousness and that deep uh, guidance of the master within takes us through. First, the awakening. Then second, uh, there is the purgation or self-discipline. 
Third, the illumination. Fourth is the uh, obscure night or the dark night of the soul. And fifth is the union or mystical union. If you're particularly interested in this topic, you can uh, later you can do a, a Google search and put in Rosicrucian beacon, Amorc. So Rosicrucian beacon, Amorc, and type in uh, mysticism in the modern world. Because in past imperator, Ralph M. Lewis actually wrote an article called mysticism in the modern world. And he goes over in this article on those five traditional phases. Later in the uh, resources that Karen's about to put in the group chat, you'll see uh, uh, a web address for the Rosicrucian uh, beacon. Uh, it's from another Grand Lodge. It's similar to the Rosicrucian Digest. Okay. There's many things that can be said about uh, cosmic consciousness, but we've, we've covered some, some basic and some tastes of it, and there'll be some resources for you. And you can always follow up and look at for that term in your Rosicrucian teachings in your monographs. By way of conclusion, um, I'd like, like to mention that you can think of the development of cosmic consciousness as the adventure back of all adventures. And the realization of cosmic consciousness in its fruition and service, because this is always to be guided towards the fulfillment and service. That is the purpose. And when we have the, and when we are guided towards assisting others in humanity, that justifies us to have more experiences of a deep mystical nature. The need must be there. You can also describe this development as the full maturation of the person being a fully mature human being in the God within. It also leads to the solving of the apparent riddle of the meaning and purpose of life. And finally, the tremendous love, understanding and an action directed in service for the welfare and the involvement of all. Thank you, Fredders and Soros. We'll open up now for uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Frater Hugh. This is Bernadette from Trinidad. I just want to talk about my experience with cosmic consciousness. Thank you. I actually um, never drew before, and through yes. my study and my journey on this path, I became an artist. Many of my art, as, as, um, a lot of messages come, you know, cosmic messages through my art. And that is my experience with my cosmic cosmic. Uh, I mean, I mean, I you know I have more experiences, but you know the art was significant. Thank you so much, Sora. I can feel it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have like uh, an issue. Like I'll go ascend, and that's very easy for me, and it feels like I can be there like that. But when I actually come back down, it's really hard to come back down. And <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. I, I can mention a couple of things. Actually, you'll find in, in, in various uh, spiritual uh, stories of the world that very experience. For example, uh, when the master Yeheshua uh, was transfigured on the mountain, some would say Mount Tabor, uh, his, his uh, three specially selected disciples, they wanted to stay on the mountain and continue yeah. the experience. But he said to them uh, that, you know, we must come down and uh, assist with the suffering in the world to be of service. But I can tell you that, um, think, of it, think of it in terms of, of the world and environment around you. Put it in, to work on putting it into the system and order uh, that you experience uh, in that deep, that deep mystical state. The higher idealism you've got there, gradually and gradually put your surroundings in that. And it may be uh, what, you, what your bedroom looks like. It may be what some of your relationships look like. It may be things that you do uh, and how system and order you use in your work. But just make it practical. This is, this is, this is, pro this is very practical. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, hello Father uh, Hugh. This is uh, Frank Hutchinson. I, uh, I just want to thank you for a most inspiring presentation. The district, but but beyond that, I, I just want I participated in the Emerging Standards team, team at the Rose Card Journal, and I just want to thank you for just the way you have always been there to support our research and uh, and your most insightful contributions that have made uh, 
some of the research so, so worthwhile. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, hello, Frater. Greetings. Oh, hello, Sarah Allison Charitz. I just want to say thank you so much for your um, inspiring um, talk today. And um, actually, you got me even in a better frame of mind for the celestial sanctum, because I think it's the first time that I was actually going into galaxies. You know, I'd usually see my celestial sanctum as this beautiful, you know, light, light thing in the sky and so on. But it's the first time that I actually went through, and I did go through from galaxy to galaxy to galaxy into that final point. And I found that so profound this time around. So I want to thank you for that. And um, I'm going to be doing that from now on. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that, Martin, from England. Uh, the going up through the uh, galaxies was, was absolutely tremendous. Um, something I found quite useful was uh, that, you know, we talk about rising up um, and uh, I found for a long time, I was thinking about rising up, but I was still here thinking about rising up. And it, it took a, a, just a, a, a switch to say, no, I'm rising up and my body's staying behind. And, and that was, for me, a pivotal point in, in the whole process. Um, could I just ask you for one thing? You spoke about ineffability, noetic, and passivity. What was number three? There was transiency. And you'll find that in that uh, final chapter of the book, Sanctuary of Self, that, uh, by Ralph M. Lewis, that uh, Sir Karen put up. But uh, yeah, one, ineffability, two, noetic, three, transiency, and four, passivity. Thank you. I have seen that before. You Right on. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I, um, I wanted to share with you that your, your talk um, reinforced in me a uh, realization that we are now cognizant that there is a high degree of crystallinity and coherence in all living systems. These, uh, these crystals, particularly at the cellular level, are piezoelectric semiconductors and convert light energy into vibrations, which allow us to release negative energy and heal and evolve. And that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. Oh, it's on me, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, my name is Samuel. I'm not an anchorage Alaska. Um, I've had several different experiences that I really won't go too much into. Um, but I will say uh, when, when it was like God finally like um, revealed himself to me, I was deep down in in the dirt, you know, just uh, doing a lot of stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And um, man, I was in full of tears, like, God, why would you, why, why would you, why would you pick me of all people, you know, and, and want to do all these different things in my life? So um, um, it, it felt more like a vision, but I was pulled out of my body. And uh, I was told that it was going to happen by a certain angel. And um, it happened. And uh, so it was like uh, I was going up, but I wasn't going up, you know. Um, it, it was very weird to explain. Um, but a whole bunch of other things happened during that, that, that time right there. Um, and man, I was just, I remember just being full of tears. And I remember this, this energy just, just overwhelming, overwhelming my body. And so um, that, that same night, I was told again, um, he said, uh, prepare yourself for God wants to see you. This was the exact words. He wants to see you. He wants to pour all of his knowledge inside of you. And so, you know, I was a heavy smoker at that time. And uh, it plainly says, stop smoking. You know, you got to do this. You got to do that. And tell me a whole bunch of different things that I have to do. You know, and, um, man, you know, the, the, the hardest part about that is 
my family, you know, I would try to tell, you know, certain people in my family, you know, what was going on, what was happening and none of them believe it, you know, and it's like, man, you know, um, but anyway, um, I, I uh, this, this energy that I was just telling you about, it has definitely just, just uh, increased since I've been talking, since I've been sitting here listening to you. Oh, great. So, uh, he's, he's trying to tell me something. Thank you very much, Frater. I noticed too, John uh, asked the question in uh, the group chat about the, uh, the marks or characteristics of cosmic consciousness that are expressed by Dr. Maurice Buck in his landmark or pioneering book, Cosmic Consciousness, dating from 1901. Um, it's interesting, I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, and for a substantial part of uh, uh, Dr. Buck's career, he worked in a sanatorium there. But uh, uh, John, I mentioned uh, some of the uh, characteristics that uh, Dr. Buck mentions about the, the loss of fear of so-called death, the intellectual uh, illumination. There's also an all-embracing sense of uh, optimism. Uh, those are some of the characteristics that uh, Buck, Buck mentions. I could keep going, but uh, we'll hear some little, you can look those up and uh, uh, hear some more from you from your comments. Thanks very much. Uh, I just I just want to thank you, Father, for this beautiful experience that you helped me to achieve today. It's just only one thing that was really a little scary. The moment we I fly, I was very very high, but when I reached a place where I couldn't see down, when he was talking about the galaxy, and I feel a little sleepy, like consciously I feel I sleep. I take a nap for a couple of seconds, and I remember last time I was watching and. I know you have to prepare to make sure land back before anything. That's why that keep remind myself to stay up and in terms to get back to my seat. And basically it, it was great. It was just this weird feeling of me feeling sleepy while I was up before I land back down. Other than that, I feel so great. Thank you for that. Thank you, Frater. My pleasure. Hello, Frater. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, meditation. That's what I'm, I, I have a question about meditation and I'm reading from a monograph. When, for the meditation to be effective, you have to do a transfer between the objective consciousness and the cosmic consciousness. Can you tell me more in your experience, more about it so I can learn from you? Yes, well, you'll see when we did the, uh, the ascent to the heights of the celestial phantom, following uh, closely the instructions of the Amor book or booklet Lieber 777, that uh, we used a lot of visualization and uh, that was going deeper into deeper into our uh, the mind. You remember I talked about the Rosicrucian thematic diagram, the mind going from the objective uh, mind, subjective mind, uh, subconscious mind to cosmic mind, that we were gradually moving through that process as we ascended. And then when we reached the heights of the celestial sanctum, uh, we are outwardly passive. We're allowing ourselves to transfer into that cosmic state. So it's a matter, it's a matter of practice, uh, just like any, any uh, skill. Um, it's a very inward one, yes, but uh, just, just take your time with it, practice it, it'll, it'll come. I, I, the, the master within you is very keen for us to meditate and do this and, and listen and work with it. So it'll help us in this. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Frater Hawk. Uh, um, I found a beautiful experience, uh, what you gave us. Thank you very much for that and the explanations. What, what, I, could, what I could feel in the recondite spaces of the universe, in the, in the cosmos, is that there are beings there also observing us when we reach these galaxies or this space. Yes. Uh, I, could, I could perceive beings observing us when, or, or people or, or entities when we reach this level of yes. the consciousness. They are there observing them. This is beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I know one, one person mentioned about uh, understanding more about the uh, uh, the cosmic or expressing more of that. You know, this concept we have of the cosmic, it's, it's a very beautiful one. Um, you'll find it defined at various points in the Rosicrucian teachings or if you have the Rosicrucian glossary, that we use it as a noun and an adjective. 
but that you know we're finding increasingly uh, uh, through modern physics and neuroscience a tremendous system and order that's throughout the cosmos and even within the trillion connections uh, neurally that are in our our brain but you can imagine the tremendous system and order that's that the cosmic takes in because it's guiding and handling all these things as an expression of the universal consciousness and as an expression of all natural and, and spiritual laws in cosmic consciousness we get the opportunity to experience, be one with the cosmic and experience it and, and know it in its fullness. I have a question, please. Um, about 25 years ago, I was at Disney World and in line for about an hour, not a long line, but you know, the kind that weave in and out with all these people. And when they opened the door to let us go in the, the theater, it wasn't a narrow door to file in. It was a two big wide doors open and we all flowed in at once. And in that moment, we were one. I was one with this body of people. And it made me realize it's like a flock of birds, a herd of animals, how they move all together. They're of the same consciousness. But after listening to you, I'm wondering, is that real? Maybe it's a part of cosmic, or is it a species consciousness? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I can say all those things are at work. You know, in the Rosicrucian teachings, we talk about the one soul, the S soul of the capital S, that we have, we, not only is that a concept, but in cosmic consciousness, you have an experience of that one soul. You know, in, in um, the cosmic consciousness state, once sometimes what is experienced is you, you have a sense that deep down in the heart of each person, that they're doing the very best that they are. It may not appear that way to the outer self when it's finite grasp, but in the infinite grasp of the cosmic consciousness, there's that sense of deep oneness with everyone. So that's a very real spiritual experience that you can have. It's great you've got it, and I would use it as a touchstone experience in your life to keep inspiring you. It, it changed me, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. We're, gonna, we're getting close to the half past the hour here. We're going we're gonna to finish up uh, uh, in about a couple of minutes. I, I, I want to Greatly thank you again. It's it's the, your sharing, uh, and I can feel your presence, and it's it's, it's great to be attuned with you in the cosmics. Thank thank you so much, everyone.